With Smite getting a sequel, the third person MOBA genre is supposed to make the leap into next gen. Smite 2 finally making the jump to Unreal Engine 5 will be a literal game changer for new players. As the original Smite was developed and is still running on Unreal Engine 3, which is a game engine from 2006 and incredibly outdated, Smite 2 is finally making the jump to a software used for many AAA titles. This brings the game to new standards, improving the graphics drastically and adding game features that are the norm nowadays but just couldn't work in Smite 1, making it the only viable option of a third person action MOBA for the next gen. Though, actually, this is not true. Smite 2 is not the only new third person MOBA releasing using Unreal Engine 5. The game has a huge competitor when trying to appeal to new players. And as much as Smite 2 wants to claim the title of the best action MOBA out there, this other game is also fighting for the title. The game I am talking about is Predecessor. Predecessor, just like Smite 2, is bringing an action-based approach to the third-person MOBA genre and is also free to play. It's also just like Smite 2 available on all big platforms and introduces crossplay. This game though also is available on PlayStation 4, which Smite 2 won't be. You get to experience the game in a gorgeous world, showcasing incredible graphics. The map also introduces verticality to the genre, offering even more room for strategic outplays and making it stand out from Smite with its flat world. But the three biggest threats to Smite 2 are the following three selling points of Predecessor. We'll now go through these points and discuss how it will affect new players and the existing player base of Smite. Firstly, Smite 2 is probably attracting especially new players who might have been interested in the game but just didn't want to play on the outdated engine with the old graphics. You must see, the player base that is still playing Smite are the people that truly are into the game and love the core gameplay and mechanics. This obviously doesn't just transfer to new players, as the player base for Smite has pretty much stayed stagnant forever, which is why they are making the step to Smite 2 in the first place to attract new players. One big step up to achieve this are the graphical improvements, obviously, which will get new players attention to then hopefully deliver with the gameplay. If what most people said who tested Smite 2 so far is true, the gameplay should be on point with Smite 1, with slight improvements and obviously a ton of bugs because it is still in development, but overall it seems to be a good sign. However, for attracting new players, Predecessor simply offers the better graphics and more immersive fights. Although Smite 2's graphical improvements definitely are a huge update to its predecessor, they are still keeping their cartoonish look, while a predecessor shows off and fully commits to its realistic graphics and the engine's capabilities. So for new player appeal, the graphics point goes to predecessor. However, for keeping those players, the gameplay must deliver. So let's talk about the part of the immersive fights. Smite 2 is supposed to keep their core gameplay quite true to the original. I played both Smite and Predecessor, and I must say, the fights in Predecessor just draw you in and feel way more personal. I'm not exactly sure if it's the position of the camera, making it seem like you look your opponent directly in the eyes, or if it are all these subtle camera movements and shakes, giving a way better hit feedback when fighting, but predecessors fights just hit way harder. Which is something that's probably also more appealing to new people looking for a third person action mobile. And so far, Predecessor offers the better graphical appeal and more immersive combat for new players. Secondly, with both games focusing on appealing especially to new players, Predecessor is simply easier to learn and join. Smite has over 150 unique characters which are all planned to eventually come to Smite 2. And new players will have to learn all of them to know what their teams and enemies are doing. Learning all roles and characters is essential in the MOBA. For this sake, Smite 2 will start with a roster of 50 guns to play. Predecessor, on the other hand, currently has a decent amount of 35 playable heroes, all unique and with different abilities. This provides every role in the game with a varying set of different playstyles, but also is not overwhelming when just getting into the game. Predecessor in this way just strikes the better balance for attracting new players and making their entry to the game more seamlessly. And for the more competitive players, the game also has a replay mode accessible to everyone, which is not only great for making cool videos, but also for rewatching yours and other games to improve your tactics and decision making, offering another in-depth mechanic to improve in the game for those who commit to it. 
And then at last, we have the biggest point of the existing player base. Smite 1's player base is quite stagnant and pretty much has been so since release, with occasional spikes when a new season drops or the latest announcement of Smite 2. But overall, it is clear that the game is not attracting any new players. The ones playing Smite are the people that truly are into the game, love the core gameplay and probably have invested a lot into it. What will they do when Smite 2 drops? Will they keep playing Smite 1 or migrate to the sequel? Most of these players have invested in the game for years or even a decade. And one thing about this, addressing Smite 2 does really upset many players. Most of the in-game purchases they made in Smite 1 won't be transferred to Smite 2. Meaning if you want to upgrade your Smite experience to next gen, you lose a huge portion of your investments. This already has caused a huge uproar in the Smite community, whether right or wrong, and begs the question whether these players are willing to jump over to Smite 2 with essentially the same core gameplay they like and some improvements, but at the cost of their year-long commitment to the game, or just continue playing Smite 1 with all their purchase skins when they haven't really bothered about the outdated engine or graphics before anyways. After all, what makes Smite players keep and return to play the game is not the graphics or any technical breakthroughs, but the core gameplay and balance of the game. Predecessor's existing player base, on the other hand, consists of also loyal fans to a game once developed by Epic Games called Paragon, which shut down in 2018, because Predecessor is essentially a remake and improved version of Paragon. Paragon's failure was hugely due to its bad balancing and disregarding the community input. The devs even had meetings with the game's pro players about updates and literally dismissed everything they said, even deciding to do the complete opposite instead. This ultimately led to Paragon's failure. But the community knew what the potential for the game was, so they decided to make it their own mission, to bring the game to its death and glory. These pros and community leads that have been disregarded by Paragon's developers are now the devs of Predecessor, and they have truly fixed and improved on it. It's got the best balancing the game ever saw, and huge game design and feature improvements, such like the item shop and the quest system. Hence, the game also has a very loyal player base, just like Smite, that also loves the game from the ground up. Some big Smite players like Inken and Intersect also have already tried Predecessor and said to have enjoyed it. Dude, Crunch is such a cool character, like Crunch single-handedly makes me want to play this game. Ultimately, Smite 2 and Predecessor are mostly fighting over appealing to new player audiences and are both trying to appeal in ways in which Predecessor simply has the upper hand. Though all the shiny selling points may attract new players, it's the gameplay that makes them stay in the end. And in this case, Predecessor scores with its immersive fights and vertical map layout, while Smite has the advantage of a decade of game development knowledge and an existing player base. Both games are not released yet and still are in development, so any greater conclusions on Smite 2's gameplay might just still be too early to make. But in terms of its target audience, it is fair to say that Predecessor puts up a great fight in collecting those players wanting to play a next-gen third-person mobile. You can sign up for Smite 2's alpha, but the free-to-play release is probably coming first in summer this year. Predecessor, on the other hand, has already launched its open beta and is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Xbox Series S and X. Crossplay enabled, the game already has seen a huge increase of player numbers and is continuing to grow. On Twitch it already has more views than Smite and also just recently hit a new milestone of 1 million players. In competition with Smite 2 you could already call it one of, if not the best, upcoming MOBA of the last decade. But safe to say, only the future can tell us which game succeeds and will claim the title of the best action MOBA. To so if you are interested in Smite 2 or the third person action mobile in general, you maybe should try out Predecessor, as it is already free to play. If you now would like to see more of Predecessor, you can check out this community made trailer for the game. Yes, the community can do such things using the replay mode. If you found this video insightful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.